truth is something that beats the imagination. At different times in our lives, many things happen around us that we cannot find explanations, which science has never been able to explain. Our event, The Horror Segment, focuses on such unexplainable matters, the unbelievable truth. Welcome to the world of horror. After hearing this, Hassan and Hossein's parents, along with several neighbors, took lanterns, some took hurricane lamps, and others brought torches to search for them in the mango orchard. They searched thoroughly in the orchard and surrounding areas but couldn't find Hassan and Hossein. This went on for one day, two days, three days, and finally ten days, but there was still no sign of the boys. The family was engulfed in sorrow over the loss of their two children. What actually happened that night? Dear listeners, a very strange incident did occur. On that day, the two brothers were in the mango orchard when, at one point, an elderly woman approached them with a handful of mangoes. That time, no one else was around. After she arrived, the woman told the two brothers, you should eat these mangoes. Look how ripe they are. However, it was not the mango season, so the mangoes they saw were not fully ripe. Yet, seeing such beautifully ripening mangoes, the natural desire for the boys to eat them arose. One day, the two brothers said yes to eating when a woman gave them two mangoes. As soon as they started eating, meaning after they took a bite and the mangoes went down their throats, two brothers reportedly lost consciousness. When they regained their senses, they found themselves in a small hut. Although the windows and doors of the hut were all open, they noticed an old woman wandering around the vicinity. Upon seeing that they had regained consciousness, the old woman entered the hut. The appearance of the old woman was very frightening and bizarre. The two brothers were terrified by her looks. Immediately, the younger brother began to cry, saying he wanted to go to their mother. The older brother asked the old woman to take them back to where she had brought them from. The old woman replied that she hadn't brought them here to take them back, but to give them something. She promised to give them back at a specific time soon, and said she would also increase her strength. Hearing this, the two brothers started to cry even more. The old woman scolded them, telling them to stop crying. The older brother managed to stop, but the younger brother continued to weep. In the meantime, the old woman brought various fruits and offered them to the two brothers. While the older brother ate a couple of fruits, the younger brother refused to eat anything and just kept crying. This behavior annoyed the old woman, who began scolding the children. The day passed in this manner. The next morning, the old woman told the brothers she would be leaving for a long time and instructed them not to go outside the hut. After saying this, she left. Then the elder brother agrees, saying that she should make those arrangements. She tells them to sleep for the night, and that she will prepare to send them away the following night. She promises that she will send them off and will not harm them. Like that night, they went to sleep. The next day, they ate the food that had been provided. At night, the old woman came back with three branches, meaning a singular branch from which three others had grown, two on the sides and one in front, resembled a tree. She brought this branch, consisting of three, and placed the two brothers on two of its branches while she held the third one above their head. She instructed to take them to their place. The little brother was seated at the front to ensure that if he fell asleep, elder brother could quickly jump down with him when the time came. The old woman repeatedly warned her elder brother to be cautious, reminding him that the tree could fly away. He needed to keep his eyes open and pay attention to when the tree touched the ground. The tree was not particularly large. It was the branches mattered. The branch where the elder brother sat was perhaps only a hand's breadth above the ground. This was a dwarf-type tree. She insisted they should jump down together and not fall asleep, as that could create an illusion that might lead them to sleep unexpectedly. She was afraid they could easily slip into slumber, so she advised them to be alert. They would soon come back and would even be able to see the locality, so they shouldn't close their eyes, according to her thoughtful counsel, especially directed at the elder brother. She felt compassion for them, which motivated her to take steps to make the impossible possible. That tree was supposed to lift them. 
The two brothers noticed this phenomenon, and in a very short time, the elder brother realized they had entered a populated area. They could see some houses under the moonlight amidst the darkness of the locality. The tree was not as high as it seemed. It was not lifting them too far off the ground. Suddenly, it seemed as if sleep had overtaken the elder brother, and at that moment the younger brother also succumbed to slumber. Despite their efforts to keep their eyes open, they couldn't. Their awareness returned when they felt the branches pressing down on them. The moment there was a jolt, it meant the three-branched tree had touched the ground. At that moment, when the tremors hit, both the older brother and the younger brother were coming to their senses, feeling a bit drowsy. As they were about to descend, three branches snared them, and they started to scream and shout. At that very instant, another strange incident occurred. Hassan and Hossein's father had a dream in which he saw his two children screaming inside the mango orchard, as if someone was holding them captive. After seeing this, he woke from his sleep, restless and troubled. He thought, why did I have such a dream, and decided to go towards the orchard. He called his wife, saying he had this kind of dream and wanted to head towards the mango grove. His wife joined him, and they went outside carrying a hurricane lantern and a torch, one in each of their hands. As they approached the orchard, they began to hear their children's cries. Rushing there, they saw that a branch had bizarrely twisted around the two children, pinning them to the ground and gradually applying pressure on them. On witnessing this, they started to scream loudly, attracted nearby people, who rushed to help rescue the children. Strangely, no matter how hard anyone tried to cut the branch, efforts were unsuccessful. Regardless of how sharp the machete or axe used against it, the tools became blunt, and the sharp edges would break off. Even when they managed to cut a portion of it, the remaining part seemed to reattach itself. There was no way to free the children from its grip, and the branch continued to press down on them slowly. Meanwhile, morning arrives, and many people come to see the scene. Regardless of who comes, several attempts are made to free the two boys, as many recite prayers and blessings in their effort, to no avail. It remains unclear what type of tree and what kind of branch it is. Slowly, the pressure on the two boys, Hassan and Hossein, is being intensified, much like how a python constricts its prey before swallowing it gradually applying pressure until the bones are broken. The two children are trapped and are crying, while their parents decide to stay by their side, eating and drinking there, feeling hungry themselves. They tend to their needs right there, cleaning up, while the pressure continues to increase. At a certain point, the two brothers die in front of their parents' eyes. After witnessing their death, the parents cannot retrieve their bodies from the enchanting branch. It remains impossible to remove the dead bodies from that spot. It is reported that no bird or animal attempted to consume the bodies, as no one approached the area. The bodies blended with the ground, and it is said the dead bodies could not be removed from the branch. Gradually, the branch becomes intertwined with the earth, sinking below the surface and drying out. At some point, around 2010, a tree grew from that branch which was uprooted in a storm. Eventually that tree also blended with the soil, 